It's a controversial move, no doubt about it. Mayor Adams is now directing the NYPD and other first responders to involuntarily transport those struggling with severe mental illness to a hospital for evaluation. Well, the move has drawn heavy criticism from civil rights groups who say the plan has no clear standard to determine if someone is mentally ill. Joining us right now to discuss the plan is the president and CEO of New York City Health and Hospitals, Dr. Mitchell Katz. Nice to have you uh, on Good Day New you. York. I don't know. I don't think it needs you, you need to be a rocket scientist to figure out if somebody is dangerous on the street. I mean, the other day I was walking with my daughter and this woman came up to us and said, hey, be careful. There's this guy pushing women on the street. I mean, we know when someone's not acting correctly. You're right, Rosanna, you're not a mental health clinician, and yet you can tell when somebody is in psychosis, when somebody needs help, and I'm not really sure why it should be so controversial to bring people who need help to a hospital. I mean, we've done this for years. How many years have we seen people in, on the streets in you know, various forms of undress, in crazy weather and you're thinking how are they surviving and why are they still on the street and they have a choice to stay on the street like at what point how are you training people to know that this is this is a problem sure. well I think what the mayor has said is we're not going to walk by that person right. anymore we're not going to pretend we don't see them we're going to make it clear I think in the past there's been worry that if we brought in someone against their will, that people would feel that we were hassling them. This is not an understanding. Mental illness is the only illness that makes you not want to take the medicine right. that you need, right? I take care of many people with diabetes or hypertension. Sometimes they don't want to take their medicine, but that's because they want to take herbal remedies or other ways. It's not their diabetes that keeps them. In the case of mental illness, it's the illness that keeps you from taking the medicine that would make you better. So society has a role to help people. And Dr. Katz, a lot of people sort of questioning this part of it, but how is this going to affect the homeless population, would you say? Well, remember the homeless population is consists of many different populations. There are people who are homeless because of economic issues. What we're really talking about here are people who are suffering from severe mental illness. The people Rosanna recognizes on the street, the people who I'm, are talking I'm sure to other themselves. other people recognize, not just yes. me. Yeah. Right, <laughs> shadow boxing, right. Um, they're clearly in their, their thought and they're homeless. And those two things together, because how could you get well from a serious mental illness while you're living on a subway platform. And there's sort of the practical side of this where there's a hotline that's supposed to be set up where an officer or somebody could call there, check to see if this is somebody who might be eligible to bring in. How will that actually work in real time? Because that seems like it could get pretty complicated. Sure. Well, I, I think that, that we, what, what we want is for the police who are one of the major workforces to feel comfortable knowing who really needs help. I mean, most of the work is going to be done by clinicians like myself, people who are, who are trained, but we know that the police are a large workforce. They're so a lot around. of times it's the police who are out there right. first, who are, who are dealing with folks exactly. on the subways or wherever. And we don't want them to walk by. And so when they're unclear about what someone's behavior is and they want reassurance that they're doing the right thing, they'll be able to call. And of course, with modern Zoom technology, you can immediately be in touch with the clinician. What happens if that person does does not want to go, like physically does not want to go. They still have to go. I mean, I, I myself have done involuntary transfers. You need help if the person doesn't want to go from police. We try not to do that. I mean, what we, I mean, we first want to always offer voluntary services and we do that always. If someone needs to come to the hospital, it's more I really need you to come to the hospital because you need care and we would help. Uh, and may, let's do this easily together, uh, take my hand, and many people will, especially if they see that it's inevitable that they're going to the hospital. Now, what go. about beds? Because this is what I'm hearing is the problem, that a lot of hospitals do not have enough psychiatric beds. There do we? There, there are challenges, but frankly, if we're not bringing the people to the hospitals, you can't complain that the reason we're not bringing them to the hospitals, there are no beds, right? Because we're not bringing them to the hospital. So do you, but do you have beds? We will expand to fit whatever group of people are brought. That's our job as hospitals. We run uh, New York City Health and Hospitals, when it's 10 hospitals, we do not turn people away. Everybody is triaged, everybody is given an appropriate plan. And how long would they stay 
once they're brought in? It would depend. So a big part of this is that you can't really evaluate somebody on a subway platform. What you can say on a subway platform is this person is suffering from a severe mental illness and they're not able to meet their needs. They have a big uh, gaping wound. They're not wearing shoes and it's 30 degrees outside. You can say this is something to worry about. You bring the person to the hospital. They're going to go to the psychiatric emergency room and then they're going to be evaluated. That may take 16 hours and the ultimate uh, disposition may be they find a family member who really can per take care of the person. That's part of it is the open-endedness of this particular situation. It's one thing to be on the streets to get the care, but how long would they actually be able to stay? I mean, there's still a lot of open-ended questions that would happen at the end, at the end of something. Sure, but if you get somebody on good antipsychotic medicine, they will be a different person in most cases. And you can make different decisions with someone. Part of the problem is when people with severe mental illness are not cared for, they don't have insight into their illness. Once you get people on regular medicines, they're able to come up with a plan for the rest of their life. Well, you know what? We need some kind of change right now on the streets of New York City. Random people being pushed in front of trains. You know, name it because you've you've heard about some of this stuff. So uh, maybe a new approach is is you know we're ready for a new approach, and we wish you well because it Thank seems you. like you're going to have your hands full. Yeah. When you succeed, we all succeed. Absolutely right. Thank you. Thank you.